Hello, everybody. Welcome to Glitch Please, your weekly podcast for weekly gaming news. Sponsored this week by MeUndies. I'm Ben, and with me I have... Hi, I'm Mika. My name, Adam. <laughs> Welcome to show. We're nailing it. Let's start off with what you've been playing. Adam. I hate you so much, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been playing a fuckload of The Witcher. So last week... Uh, Here we go. Last week, I said that I had three games on my hit list, and they were uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, The Witcher 3, and uh, Persona 5. And I had started all those games, but not finished any single one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Horizon, probably 10 hours in, uh, or 20 hours in, no, 15 hours in. Somewhere in the middle. Uh, Persona, 10 hours in, and The Witcher was like 60 hours in. So I'd like, I'd really dove deep into The Witcher. Um, when I first played, I got to the island of Skellige, and that's basically where I, I took a break, and for some reason never came back. I don't have a justification for it. I just didn't go back, uh, despite loving the game, like thinking it was like a revolutionary, amazing experience. I just never went back. And it was always hard. To, I, tr I tried multiple times to get back into it, but if you drop yourself into The Witcher and you don't know what you're doing, it's a very intimidating experience. Okay, sell The Witcher to me because I kind of did the same thing, except didn't. I started the game, I rode around my horse, I talked to some people in an inn, and I got super lost on where I was supposed to go and what I was supposed to do, so I have no idea how to get back into how did The Witcher. You get, how did you get lost? There's I, quest markers. I don't know. There's a lot of information on that map. I, well, <laughs> uh, there is. So, uh, basically, I ended up uh, I, I, I made a poll on Twitter, and I was like, what should I play first? And The Witcher won. Not by much. Horizon was was very close second, so I'll be doing that second. Because you look like a character in it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, in The Witcher or Horizon Zero Dawn? Horizon. Like, you're a good mix of both. Oh, yeah. No, I could be in The Witcher or Horizon. You, you, they have beards could. in both those games. Yeah, they do. Um, that's that's also beardist. I, I want to see... Not everyone with beards look the same. I want to see <laughs> Anime Boy Persona 5, Adam. Uh, that game that game's going to be taking me a while to get to. Um, but regardless, so I... Started playing The Witcher again, and I picked up my save 60 hours in, and I got about five hours, and I I'd got reaccustomed to the game. I started doing some story quests, started doing some side quests. Remembered how incredible the writing is in that game. Like, the storylines in that game, even side stories, are so fucking compelling and fun to do uh, that I was, like, almost immediately sucked back in. But I realized I didn't remember shit. Uh, for the main story. Mm -hmm. I kind of remembered some of the stuff I had done throughout the game, but nothing to do with what, like I had no context for what I was doing in the main story other than it was looking for Siri, which as it turns out is pretty much the whole first half of the game, um, or more than first half, to where I've gotten in the game. Uh, so I restarted, and I decided that I was going to play it on uh, the easiest difficulty and just play the main story, just to <laughs> power through, and that's what I've been doing. And so you've been thought, doing any side quests or anything? Or? I, you, I did a little, like it's kind of impossible to resist. That game is like so chock full of cool shit uh, that yes, I've done a little bit of side questing. Um, and I thought it would be hard to go back and start a game over because I almost never do that. I almost never can restart a game and enjoy what I'm doing. And not only am I enjoying it, but I'm watching every second of every cutscene and not skipping any dialogue and just like taking it the fuck in. Um, and if you didn't know, the game starts out and basically Geralt is looking for Ciri because the wild hunt is after her. Ciri being his daughter, that is not a spoiler, that's just like information that they forget to mention until like <laughs> you listen to it in a dialogue. Like he's casually, he's like, oh yeah, it's my daughter. You, you're like the whole time, like 15 hours in, I'm like, is it her, his daughter? I don't know, because they don't give you context. But he's like, oh yeah, it's my daughter. Like it's oh. just like, no, it's not, a, it's not a secret. He just mentions it casually. Huh. Um, but that's basically so far the whole, what the whole story has been like. There's there's story there's side there's quests that like will gather information about where Siri is, but you do like these long side like side missions to get that information, and they're really good though. But like, hmm. so th is this? Here, let me ask you a question. Is this a game? So there there are like two types of games that tell a story, right? For me, there's JRPGs that just like lay it all out there in long like, expositions, and then there's Dark Souls where you just like look at item descriptions and that's how you find out the story about the game. Uh, is this, this is very much an ex exposition game. Okay. You, like, the, but it's not like, it's not like a 40 minute cutscene that will explain everything about the game to you. It's, it's, it's conversation, it's, it's, some, some things are inferred, like you think Siri might be his daughter and you kind of just have to assume that and you kind of infer 
what a witcher is by the way people address you. They're like, oh, you're a witcher, you fucking gross mutant person. And you're like, okay, I, I, get, I understand how the world feels about me. Um, but it's never like explicitly explained. It's, sometimes it is. Like the, the game has so much narrative in it mm -hmm. that you could probably find side quests that will address every thing in the in the world in the universe. Period. But that's kind of like Skyrim. Like you'll never finish the main quest if all you do is side quests. But honestly, I don't like. I don't know that it matters. Like the game. Really. Th listen, I don't say this lightly. I think The Witcher Three might be the best game ever made. <laughs> Oh my really? goodness, like, holy and shit. I, and I'm not saying that Dark Souls is no longer my favorite game because there's... You gave me a heart attack for a second. There's like, really uh, you know, there's a certain level of, of fulfillment and joy that Dark Souls has given me that I don't think I'll ever get from another game. Uh, however, like, the world that The Witcher is set in, the, the, the stories that it tells, like, everything about that game is so incredible. And it's not a perfect game. I don't think any game is perfect or without flaws because you can... You can poke holes in any game, um, and I'm, I'm, there are certainly things about The Witcher that could be stronger. But just the feeling that game gives me when I play it is like no other game. Like I feel like I'm in the world. I shut everything else off. I turn off the lights. I'm just focused on the game and listening to these people's stories and exploring the world and fighting monsters. And I feel like a quintessential fucking badass when I play that game. You, you mentioned something about the sound, and I know yeah. lately you've been talking a lot about sound yeah. and like sound design. And like, is this a game that's really good for that? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, like pretty much every. Everything in this game has a lot of love and attention poured into it. So yes, sound design is really good. Uh, maybe not as strong as some games, but the soundtrack is really strong. Uh, yeah. Like every area has specific uh, music that plays ambient or you know whatever it may be. Uh, the probably the strongest area of sound design is when you walk into a city. Like you, you just hear the hustle and bustle all around you. People are having specific conversations pertaining to like the area of the world that they're in. You hear clangering of pots and pans. You hear like people like hawking up loogies. Fucking awesome. Is it um, hawking up loogies? Like fighting in the game, is it more like you can pick what kind of class that you want to play, or is it like this is that's that's one of the things I think that might turn some people off mm -hmm. is that you are playing Geralt of Rivia, right. the Witcher. Okay. Um, and you, while there is some divergence in skill tree, like. For the most part, you're playing a very similar game. Like, it doesn't alter the gameplay that much. A Witcher is someone who uses two swords. A steel sword for fighting men and, and beasts, and a silver sword for fighting monsters. Okay. Um, and he has the ability to use signs, which are, uh, like, light magic. You can do things like, like uh, knock people back, or influence their minds, or uh, shoot some fire out, or defend yourself, or lay a trap. Uh, but... And, and you can alter that stuff or improve that stuff or add some certain like moves to your, your melee abilities. But in general, you'll, you'll pretty much be mostly doing melee, throwing some signs into the mix, mm -hmm. and occasionally using like your crossbow for ranged enemies or throwing bombs if you want to. I mean, that kind of reminds me of like Final Fantasy. Like you're playing as Noctis, you're using swords and daggers and stuff. You're not right. I throwing remember, a bow into it. I remember why I quit the game. I left the inn. I followed my path trail to my next marker. I somehow got off of that into a graveyard. Mm -hmm. I fought a skeleton that was like eight levels above me. I don't think I was using the right sword. I kept trying to heal myself. I died. I set my controller down and said, I will come back to this later, and I have not <laughs> since. <laughs> I, think the, I think a lot of people's chief complaint in that game is that the combat isn't its strong suit. And I, I well, I definitely agree with that. Um, it can be a little tricky to make it play the way you want to, uh, when it does play the way you want to. It's, it has like a, the way he moves, there's like a super, it's very elegant looking. Uh, maybe not elegant to play, but visually it's very pleasing. And there are great like chop their heads off moments or just Ooh. like just slice them in half moments. Um, man, that game is fucking incredible. I, it, it has inspired me to like, I'm like fully in The Witcher now. Like I am... I started reading the books. I'm like halfway through the first oh, book Adam. now. Dude, I'm in. You're, it, you're in super deep. It's only been a week. Um, <laughs> Can't wait for this to be the game you talk about for the next nine months. Dude, that's how long it's going to take. I know, I know. Uh, but like mainly my goal is to get through the story, play the DLCs. But I, I, I have been getting sidetracked and I continue to want to see all the side stories and do all the stuff. Uh, my first time through, I think I was a little put off by a couple things. Uh, the itemization in that game, like getting gear upgrades and... Uh, finding like rewards around the world can feel a little bit stagnant. Like you can, you, a lot of times you'll feel like you'll get just shit that you don't need, or 
upgrades that don't feel like they make a whole lot of a difference. But I started, uh, like, when I came back to the game, I changed my expectation a little bit of, like, I just want to see the stories in the world. And fighting stuff is fun and all that, but I really just want to see everything that this game has to offer in terms of story, and that is definitely where... It's the strongest. Story is my number one thing I need to like hook me into a game. So yeah, that, I, that, that game that game has yeah. it, dude. Um, maybe I'll, I'll try to get back into it, and maybe yeah. we'll yeah, see if it's... Yeah, I'm gonna pick it up dude, after this recommendation. It's the only game I play for the next year. It's real fucking good. Cool. Um, and, and reading the books, uh, I've started to notice, like, in the, in the game, they make specific references to the books that I would never have picked up on. And like you don't you wouldn't need to pick up on, but it's like it's one of those fun things of seeing like, oh he I just read that in the book and he just mentioned it in the game. This is great. <laughs> like I love that. Um but man, fucking The Witcher 3, goddamn what a game. What a all fucking right. game. All right. Okay, cool. All right, Adam's all under the Witcher, so yes. be prepared to talk about that forever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Mika? Uh so we're gonna take a hard left. I've been playing a totally different type of game. Um for some reason I've like not been touching my consoles as much lately because a bunch of my favorite like mobile games just came out. So I became a mobile game. Just talking about the Switch, right? Person. Yes, the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, no, um, uh, but uh, I really like Japanese like RPGs and Japanese uh, like rhythm games on the phone. Okay. Because weirdly enough, they have like stories and characters and stuff, and there's like actual full RPGs on phones, and it's really fun to play. And um, a lot of my friends get into rhythm games and stuff. And what, what kind of stories? Is this like Witcher level? Or no, is this like it's not like Witcher level. Idol pop team. It's not even like that. It's like more than that. There's like actual like. So this new game that just came out, it's called uh, Bang Dream, and it's a, I know it's <laughs> okay, awful. Okay, cool. It's a base. It's like by the company Bandori, and uh, they have like so it's like these four or five different idol groups and they have to like come together to perform at this like cafe to help this cafe not close but that was all you got surface level from like because there's an anime that ties into it kind of like love live okay and um i thought oh it's gonna be something stupid i'll just skip through all the stories but like when i started up every band has a whole like 15 to 20 stories that's about how they got together wait okay i'm confused is this about an idol band trying to save a cafe? Yes. This is about multiple bands trying to help this cafe out. Trying to just be good people and like put on performances. It's like a very shallow level goal. Visual novel slash rhythm game? It's, vo- it's visual novel slash rhythm game. So cool. like I've just, it, I was very surprised to get into this game because um, a lot of the rhythm games that I've been playing are like super simple. It's like, there it is. Yeah, that's oh, adorable. Oh, look adorable. So that's, that's the gameplay. Um, you and, just tap in your screen for all this shit? Yep, and you, there's like slides and swipes when you get into the complicated levels, which I just enjoy because I like music and I like rhythm games. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I was judging you a little bit when yeah. you brought this game up, yeah. but now I'm all in because I yeah. love rhythm games like this. Yeah, this is the, so it's a tap-tap game, and then there's a lot of complicated levels to leveling up um, the world around you to help improve their skills and stuff, and then every band, there are... Down. One, two, three, four. There's five bands. That's what. Yeah, there are five bands. Every band has... Uh, chapters of their story that's how they got together to be this band and then there's the main story of all the bands coming together to perform at this huge concert to help this like cafe out and um, all the characters are really well written they all have their own quirks they all have their relationships and sometimes the bands intermingle Um, you can tap on little conversations in the populated world and see the band members talking to each other and you learn who's whose sister who goes to school with each other and it's not as complicated and deep as The Witcher or even like Skyrim or even the lore of Overwatch, which just got a new comic and new DLC. But for something that's just like happy and they also have so they have covers of songs. One of the bands did a cover of the Attack on Titan theme and it's in the game. And it, that's okay. something that's like really cool to me as just like a, huh. a nerd that enjoys anime music um, and cute anime girls. It is uh, very fun, and a lot of my friends and I have been playing it. They also have multiplayer, where you can play together. So I sit there, and we all get up in a group, and we play together and get more points because we're trying to get combos and stuff together. Okay, yeah. Send me, send me the, uh, <laughs> send me the title of this. I will. I will totally help you and these girls save this good old cafe. Yeah. Say what you want. No one does rhythm games like Japan. Oh yeah. I mean, all, like, dude. You, you remember yeah. Mai Mai? Yeah. That's all I want to do is play Mai Mai, but you can't play it around here. No. It's it's that big oh. dishwasher game yep. where you're just going. Yeah. And Ba-da-ba-da. the best part is like one of the original love or the original uh, rhythm games, Love Live. They have arcade versions in Japan, 
And I didn't know that until I walked upstairs into an arcade and I saw Love Live and it was like these circles were all there and I was like, my life is complete. I can play tap tap in big versions now. And they printed out the cards of the idols when you completed a game. And it was like, insert like 10 yen if you want another one. And I was just like slamming my money. <laughs> and I have like a stack of like all of these Love Live cards. Japan's now. all about that, man. Like, yeah, there it was like Taiko Drum Master is the big one. That oh, you know. I didn't know. Nah, that game, I don't like that game. I liked that but game. But it's a rhythm game. But what it got me really game. into it was there was a DS game. I don't. Uh, Osu Tatake Oendan, I think is what it was called. And it's, I know it sounds crazy, but they had a bunch of like English songs, like Good Charlotte and like. Yeah, they do. And, yeah, and it's like, they tell like really interesting stories as you're like playing through. And I just remember getting to like the last level and like my stylist in my hand was cramping because yep. I was just like circling and like tapping and like almost cracking my DS in half. But man, that was really intense and a ton of fun. It's funny you say that. Like, so I, whenever I do rhythm games, I hold my phone like this and my pinkies are under it. And last night, my finger got stuck because I was playing that stupid game for like three hours and I was like geez you don't, you don't just finger. play it like this so Sung Won, you know the really awesome anime yeah. dude he is a love live master when he was here at the office he can play them on math like the actual expert version and Pulls do all the swing love notes. gloves and like he practically does he like put his phone on the ping pong table and he's like watch this Mika and I'm like watching his hands go and he got a full combo and it was like a thousand notes and I was like <laughs> Damn. Oh my god. I thought god. I was the master. I was like, I thought the I, was, student. I was decent, but this man, you, he. Another level. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. You make jokes about gloves, but if you go to Japan, there are people. Oh, anyone yeah. that takes yeah. their music, music, rhythm game seriously, they're wearing fucking gloves. My friend who lives in Japan was taking me around the arcades, and there's her favorite piano game, and she pulls her white gloves out of her pocket, and I was like. Is it the one where you go like this? Yeah, and you have to go like I this. Love that fucking and you have game. to like lift your the hands. It's so game. weird. Oh my god, I want to play that one again. Right? But you know what? But the fact that she was just like, this is my favorite game, and just like casually puts yeah. on her gloves, I'm like. <laughs> Is this a normal Open thing? Open suitcase. Yeah. Dude, right? that, like, Dude, suit. Such a fucking experience going there that people like hang up their GoPros and just record themselves. Yep. And they're fucking badasses, they're so dude. They're so good. Have you, there's a, a My Hero Academia, like it's not a rhythm game, but it's a, you're like. You have my attention. Um, I'll, I'll bring in the cards to show you because they also print out cards. So it's you a. Have my money. <laughs> it's a, uh, like a rhythm style fighting game and the, you pick your team and you have to, at a certain time, like hit a button to power up your team. And if you play really well and the characters love you, you'll get rare printouts of like the characters with little descriptions at the bottom. And these people, first of all, everybody's very kind in the arcades. They saw that I was waiting for like one turn. And meanwhile, they had two binders. I mean, thick binders full of the cards because you can scan them and reuse their power if you got a rare one. So I see this dude like slam his binder and he has like 40 pages of just Bakugo. And I'm like, who are you? It was just <laughs> awesome. so amazing. Yeah, oh! There's the piano game. Oh, that game is so good. It's so amazing. like I actually haven't the, played this one. I really so it's awesome. It, not only are you tapping the like the, the notes transform because the, the they're, they're it's like a screen, but you have to raise your hands up for like mm -hmm. you get more points if yeah, you raise yeah. your hands up. Yeah. Uh, and if, huh. if you watch like an expert play this game, it's like it's fucking nuts, dude. It's insanity. And to just yeah, okay, like that. that. There you go. Now he's doing it. There you go. He's like flipping his hands and look at the over combo. each other. Yeah, like, it, it tracks your your hand height and stuff like that. Oh, so, that's so cool. Yeah, like you need to you need to raise your hands up. <gasps> I really wish we had more arcades in America. Right? Yeah, it's just it's a thing over there, man. I just, and oh, I so cool. I also love that the crazy part was that there are these experts and masters, but like this small little girl who's never played them before was just waiting, and they were like, "Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to take up your time." And I was like, "No, no, I just like watching you. Like, are you kidding me? They're just Jeez. so nice. Teach me. Oh. Yeah, it's awesome. But yeah, yeah. so that's what's. I, I started a, the the rhythm game uh, just came out on the fourth, so I've been diving headfirst because I'm level like a hundred something in Love Live, so I'm like, Love Live isn't really a goal for me. I just log in, get my daily rewards, play some songs, log out. Now I'm like, there's a new story and new characters. You ordered that love. game as to what I am to Hearthstone. It's to the way daily don't log yep. in, do your your tap taps. Do your tap then, taps. That's me and Fire Emblem Heroes too. I just like do my thing. But this is like new content, new anime girls, new story. It's and sweet. It's a uh, it's a blast. Cool. Yeah. I guess I'm playing like a weird combination of those two games of what Adam's game and your game. <laughs> and that like I am playing a I'm playing Fury. Like I finally have like. Gone, gone. The Witcher has nothing to do with Fury. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me get, let me connect my points. Adam was offended. This is the Dark Souls of the Witcher games. <laughs> I've slipped out of Sea of Thieves. Now I'm going through my backlog. Mm -hmm. Finally got back to Fury, and Fury is 
not what I expected. It's one of those games that I kind of just picked up and forgot about and then went back to after I heard it was in a few people's top tens for their like game of the year from last year. And that game is so good in terms of like sound design, sound, like the whole soundtrack, the um, fighting mechanics, the like it feels like I'm playing a rhythm game and a really well-tuned fighting game uh, with some very interesting like themes and story. Um, I've talked to you a little bit about it. It's Whoa, the graphics are cool. just boss fights, What? which sounds really weird, but they're done in phases. So like you have a set number of lives, so say like three lives and a health bar, and your enemy has like a, you know, a number of health bars that continually go up. And as they, um, as you like fight them in each of their phases, your goal is to get them through one health bar before they get you through a health bar. And if you get through them, them through a health bar, you gain all of your health back, and then you can go through their next phase. So each phase kind of feels like a level. Okay. Um, and the sound design is just really well done in a, like, um, you're you're jumping to the beat and like moving like around these like bullet hell, bullet shooter, like levels that are crazy and you go from um, kind of a ranged area where you're like they're shooting a bunch of bullets at you and you have to jump around until you can get in and hit them to low enough health and then you go into like a close combat phase. I'm fascinated um, right now. It's really really interesting and it's not I don't think it's a very expensive game. You might be able to get it for like 15 what or 20 it bucks. It's on like Xbox Live Arcade, PC, um, PS4. Huh. Uh, Seems like a pain in the ass. It's, yeah, it does. Once you get into a rhythm, though, like you are just super into it. Um, the combat is a lot of fun. You can. It, it's very simple. It's uh, you have a parry, you have a melee attack, and you have a blaster. And you can charge your melee attack, and you can charge your blaster. There's a few other like mechanics. Like once you get into the close combat, you can like charge your blade, and you'll do more damage. But for the most part, it's just like learning your enemy's movements, knowing. When to parry, they'll always like telegraph their attacks. So like they'll go in for an attack, you'll see a flash, you'll know like when to parry, but it's not like just a mash B and you'll auto parry. It's like a, you have to get the timing down. Um, and like once you get into it, man, like I just feel like there was a moment I had headphones on, the sound design's really well done, and I was just like fighting through these bosses and just felt like flowing through water. It was it was amazing. I just took, took my headphones off, realized it'd been three hours and oh shit, <laughs> I'd been like, yeah, it's great. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Cool. Um, so like it doesn't feel like it's just boss fights. I think I'm on boss seven or eight out of I think ten to twelve. I don't remember how many exactly there are, but each boss has been different for like there's a sniper boss and there's like just the generic like soldier boss and there's like the guardian boss with a shield and a sword Ooh. who has no blaster. So it's like you have different strengths and weaknesses and strategies. It, yeah. So it's not cookie cutter. Yeah, and like cool. once yeah, once you get into it, it's just like it's like a good rhythm game. Like you just you realize you're playing and you feel like you're doing something really really cool as you're like blasting through these like different rhythms. Uh, and I guess like the Witcher tie-in I was trying to get to is like kind of the combat. It's just like go ahead and do a bunch of attacks and whatnot. But I was stretching. Adam's like, no, fuck you. I was stretching a little bunch bit of with the attacks. Uh -huh. I'm just giving shit. <laughs> well, I have two new games that I need to check out, and I'm yeah. very excited about That's it. Really cool. Before oh, we so Witcher. Put down the tap tap. Well, Neither it's is new to me. I'm just giving shit. Why are you giving I'm every not shit? So salty today. <laughs> Well, uh, we have a few other games to talk about, but before we go to that, yeah. let's talk about underwear. <gasps> My Everybody favorite. underwear. Yeah. Good, comfortable underwear. Let's talk about MeUndies. MeUndies uses, uh, well, you've heard about us talk about MeUndies before, and you know that we're big believers in the product. They're super comfy. They are the perfect balance of comfortable fit. Every month they have new and exciting prints, and they arrive at your door in a fun bag. MeUndies is great. I'm actually wearing some MeUndies right now. They are like my Wonder Bread pair that are just like look cool, and just everything below my lower half is comfortably snug and feels great. Uh, MeUndies uses Lensing Micromodal in their underwear. It's a sustainably sourced, naturally soft fiber that starts with beechwood trees, ends with the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced, and just fits. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Uh, MeUndies guarantees you will love their undies or your money back. MeUndies has a great offer for any listeners. Uh, for any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 20% off and free shipping. MeUndies is so sure that you'll love their underwear that they'll offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And if you don't love your first pair, you'll get a full refund. This is a no-brainer. Get 20% off a pair of the most comfortable undies you will ever put on. To get your 20% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction, go to MeUndies.com slash glitch. That's MeUndies.com slash glitch. Also, as the only uh, lady up here, their bralettes are also super comfy. Ooh. I love them. They're nice, and they are supportive, and they are just as soft as the underwear. Just thought I should... Throw that out there. MeUndies is solid. I love their yeah, products. They're, they're great. great. And they also have cute designs. Let's move on to game. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Let's talk about Minute. I just have to say, I've 
never felt more rage playing a game than struggling through a minute. <laughs> really? I have such low patience, I found out. I, I took a self-discovery through playing this game. I discovered that I have zero patience and I hate repeating things. Minute is not the game for me. Really? Yes. See, I feel like Minute is like my kind of game. Mm. Uh, it, Can't do it. Minute, so yeah, Minute is a uh, game by Devolver Digital. Yep. Uh, it launched this week. It's $10? $9.99. $9.99? $9 is, is it by Devolver Digital or they just publish it? They might have just published it. They're, they're pretty yeah. big on just publishing stuff. Huh? Uh, developer. I just, just saw it and just clicked off of it. Uh, Vlambeer is the developer. Vlambeer. And they, they made, dude, they made some, uh, something else that was really, really popular. Nuclear Throne. Nuclear Throne. That was, yeah. the, that was the big one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed this game. Um, I did say I didn't enjoy it. It's just not the game. It, it, sure. It's just infuriating. Uh, so, yeah, for those of you that don't know about Minute, Minute is a, a game by Vlambeer, published by Devolver Digital, that is um, you have 60 seconds to uh, do anything in the world. It plays very much kind of like a 2D Zelda game where you move through different platforms. And also it has the like Majora's Mask esque, like whatever you pick up, you keep exactly. the next time. And then you have 60 seconds to basically get things done. Um, it's a very, very short game. I picked it up, uh, like I think it would release Tuesday night at midnight, and by 1.30 in the morning, I had finished the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just like a very, I feel like solid indie game in that like the mechanics are well done. I didn't like have any bugs or anything. It was just oh. a fun, short game to play through. It's just puzzles and figuring out like what you need to do each respawn to complete the game. So eventually you will finish the game in 60 seconds. Exactly. Um, well, well, you you eventually like get new homes, so you're like kind right. of getting further in your progress. Yeah, but it's it's fun. I like the concept a lot. Yeah, uh, um, there's definitely like a struggle of like so, sometimes you get stuck trying to figure out like where the, what the fuck is my next mini objective. Yeah, and uh, that could be kind of frustrating. But I think it is a really a really fun concept. So I guess I should ask you both: Have you beaten the game? No. No. Okay. How far? How much did you play of it? Thirty minutes. Thirty which, minutes. Which, but a lot of that was also struggling. I got to the desert and I was I saved the guys that come to my boat and I was like I don't know where your fucking boat is. Uh, so I started walking around doing other stuff and I found some other clues. I'm like I don't know how to do. It. Uh, where's the snakes? I, I, yeah, <laughs> I think around then is when like you definitely hit the point of like yeah, there's, there's a lot of paths. There's a lot of paths you can go through. Yeah, yeah. and I I, uh, I played about an hour. Um, I got through the desert, I was in the temple, I was trying to find all these tentacles and stuff, and I was just... Yeah, did it, you find tentacles? I found tentacles, yeah. and I just, I got to the point where, I think it was because I was also like at work, and I was like, I need to also get back to work, but I just started getting frustrated. Like, I just kept accidentally dying, and not like via the 60 seconds, but mm -hmm. like crabs or scorpions would hit me, and I would die, and I'd just be like, well, that was a waste of my 60 seconds, um, but... I did not finish the game. I hope to finish the game. I okay. hope to like meditate, zen out. You're, I couldn't. I couldn't find a way to natively map a controller. Really? To it, yeah. I, I was trying to play the PS4 controller or anything, and it uh, no, didn't like it. Hmm. So, but you can you can remap the controls to different controls on your keyboard. Which oh, you I can. Did. Yeah, because arrow keys and and X is not for me. Mm. So I did wads and space wads. It's a one-handed game, and that's fine. Oh, I mean, that's it's smart. it's a good like chill out game. Like yeah. just, just 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 explore. It kind of reminds me of like one level above like an old Newgrounds game, but like yes. not quite like a fully fleshed out yeah. six-hour story. Oh my god, yeah. Newgrounds. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, <laughs> like it, it's definitely a fun concept, and I for it's only it's only like a few bucks, right? It's like ten it, bucks. Yeah, it's ten bucks. Nine ninety nine. It's I don't know if you, if you want a cool little fuck around game and you want to, yeah. it's a it's an interesting concept for sure. I like the the music. The it's music really is su uh, super fucking bassy. I, <laughs> I loaded it up on my speakers and uh, I don't know if you know this. I got new speakers that have a, a badass bass, but playing this game, all I could hear was like, Burr. I was like holy shit. Uh, so I had to turn that down a little bit. Uh, well, caution, word to the wise, yeah. don't play this game on something that's super fucking bassy. Yeah, yeah I played it on Xbox uh, and like I didn't have any huge speakers or anything hooked up to it, but I just like laid in bed and like maneuvered through, found my can. One of like the, my favorite things is like you definitely get a feeling for like time. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like one of the first things I did though is just like, okay, I'm just gonna fuck around. Like, so I like went and like you pick up a sword. It's like the first thing that kind of kicks this whole thing the off. sword is cursed. Exactly. And that's what starts the whole 60 seconds, but you can't go anywhere because like there are bushes like blocking you off that you can't cut down. Um, and just the first thing I did is I like walked and you find a lighthouse and there's a turtle. And like the turtle- He talks so slow. Oh, I hate him. <laughs> He's like, just so you know, I think 
And it's like, ah, oh, six seconds up, you fucking asshole. Did you did you listen to this whole story? He told me about a treasure. Yeah, you know? that's what I love. Because yeah. it starts off just like, I really like the waves. It's nice on this lighthouse. But you have to get there so quickly and wait for the, like 40 seconds for him to talk through his fucking sentence. Oh, yeah, his whole thing is but just like. Yeah, the game knows what it is. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, then you walk up to somebody else and they're just like, boom, text. Like, yep. they yeah. lay out their information. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and like it's kind of cool just to be able to go through and like you get different like kind of I guess weapons or items that you can use and like um, yeah like I beat it I think it was my final time was 80 minutes like and 12 seconds or something like that and um, I still can go back and collect there's collectibles there's like tentacles you can uh, find for this like cute little octopus dude. I felt so bad for him. He was just like in a hidden temple and he's like, please find my tentacles. And there, yeah, there's a few other things. So I'm gonna go back and I'll probably like end up 100%ing it. Just cause Wait, you mean the fun. tentacles aren't a part of the story? Fuck that octopus. Um, <laughs> the one thing uh, that might be off putting for some people is the graphical styles, monochromatic, and yeah. uh-huh. um, it didn't bother me, but it's, it didn't also do much for me, uh, the art style. And it's sometimes it's a little bit difficult to. As early on, a little bit difficult to discern, like, hey, you can move boxes. Like, I don't know what the fuck a box is in this game. Yeah. Like, until until you push your first box, like, okay, that is square. I, I, I recognize that now. Uh, yeah, that, I definitely, I got stuck on this one, like, kind of a spoiler, if you plan on playing a game that's an hour and a half long. Um, I found an area where you can, like, push these boxes into an oil spill, mm-hmm. and then if you, like, keep pushing them, you can kind of start building a bridge. But the puzzle's impossible, and there's no point to it. And I had, like, so I just spent a good probably, like, 20 minutes just, like, pushing boxes. I'm like, okay, how do I do No, I'm stuck now. All right, I guess I just die and restart, and I go back and, like, find out there's just, oh, yeah, there's no point to this. I guess it's just, like, pointing me toward this is a future area you can possibly go through. Wow. Uh, good job. Yeah. This game kind of reminds me of, like, did you ever play Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on, like, the Game Boy Color? No. It's very much like this, but on a very smaller scale. Link's Awakening was, there's a bunch of dungeons on this large world map on this like 2D scale that you go through. You'll find a new item that lets you go to a new area or a new dungeon. And then maybe you'll open up like multiple like different paths to different dungeons. And uh, eventually you kind of have this whole feeling of like, okay, I know the map. I know where to go for here. I know how to do this. And like, it's just this, you start small and you slowly expand until you finish the game. All right. I think it's just very interesting that I was acutely aware of if I was walking around with the you know, keys, and I walked into a house, I was like, I just lost a second. That just lost me like two, three seconds. This oh, I killed game. myself very often. I used that C button a lot, because I, I was like, ah, this that. is a wasted run. Dead. Yep. Didn't yeah. realize that was a mechanic. I didn't either. Through the game. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know, I, I recommend Cute. it. Uh, it might not be for everybody, but. It's all right. I definitely it's don't not recommend it. Yeah. It's just it's okay. stressful. It's a fun game. Yeah. Sweet. It's fun. Yeah. Well, there's another game that dropped recently mm-hmm. that uh, I know we've been playing, and it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, definitely involves co-op, and that is A Way Out. <laughs> Those, that floaty, freaking cart mechanic, my favorite. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So how far are you two in A Way Out? Uh, Ashley and I played through a few, like an hour, hour and a half okay. yesterday, and okay. we got out. That is how okay. far we got. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm at the end. I'm at the very end. My friend, we got to the climax of the game. My friend's like, I gotta go to bed. Like, no! All right, it's cool. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that game is, uh, it's not bad. Uh, no, I like it. It's So it's a narrative-driven, cooperative experience mm-hmm. um, that heavily draws from other popular media, <laughs> especially in the early goings. The beginning of that game is basically Shawshank Redemption. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, it's by uh, Hazelight Studios. Yeah, uh, they did Brothers: Tale uh, of Tales Two Sons, which that game is near and dear to my heart. It's a, I, I really, really enjoy that game. That was another game I kind of just picked up and like started and then finished. Yeah, uh, story is really well done. If you don't know, the developer of this game was the one that said "fuck the Oscars." Oh, what oh a, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. he's such. He's also he's, he's also the main like the, the one of the two main guys in the yeah, game. Yeah, wasn't it Joseph Ferris? Oh, yeah, Joseph yeah. Whoa, okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. you just made me connect those two things. What yeah. a what a <laughs> Great guy. Great guy. What a great guy. Uh, yeah, no, I'm only like, I, I guess I, I took my time in the prison because I'm probably like two and a half hours into that game and I just got out. Uh, All right. I just reached like, you go from there to. There, there's a significant chunk of game after that. Is Which there? I was I think, surprised about. I think, so the game sort of uh, after you, I don't want to, I don't even know if we should have said that, that you get out of prison. We'll throw a spoiler down. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, um, I'm not going to say any spoilers past that, but uh, but but beyond that, the game sort of gives you not more freedom, but like 
more mini games to fuck around with. And I think that's a lot of the charm of the game comes from like, you know, little tiny little competitive things that you can do with your friends. Yeah. Um, and and me and my friend never play competitive games because we're just not that kind of we're just we don't like that stuff. But when it comes to the games like this that have like little mini mini games that we can we can fight each other in, it's like this is the fucking this is the shit right here. Yeah. Now uh, I remember why it took me two hours is because uh, me and my friend got in a pull up contest and we were just like see? trying to do pull ups, just like mashing buttons yeah. and like trying to get to like 15, 16, like one more, yeah. just one more. Uh, but that game does some really cool things with the camera. Oh, like, it's so cool. Yeah. The, the, as you can see, literally right here, the changing of how much you see depending on how important it is in some cutscenes, and like one of person's in a cutscene while the other person's walking around and stuff like that. Like that was that's something I've never really seen in a game before, and it was so interesting. Yeah, I, I will say that I liked the intro to the game a little. Like in the middle of the game, wasn't bad. Uh, it felt a little predictable at times, um, but. It is, it is still a pretty compelling story. I would probably recommend, if you're gonna start this game, to play it in one sitting, um, rather than taking a break. It's probably like five to six hours long, so I would take like a Saturday with your best friend and just play through it, because uh, I feel like I, you lose a little bit of the motivation as you take breaks. Like, oh, I, I did the first part of the game, and now I'm in the second part. Like, eh, kinda, you kinda get a little detached. So I'm, I broke my play session up into three sessions now, and so I feel a little bit like I'm not as driven to mm -hmm. care, uh, but it is still fun. I think uh, there's this one part of the game that I've never seen in another game before. It's not really a spoiler, but it's one of the puzzles that you have to coordinate with your, I mean, actually they showed it where you're walking back to back up a shaft. Yeah, and oh yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that, that swinging like rhythm mechanic of like you have to be in sync and if one person doesn't, the other person, like you'll be offset. And I was like, that's just such something that I've never, you're so dependent on who you're yeah. playing with, and that's a really cool. I would, I would have honestly. Uh, the gameplay. So if you don't know, the gameplay pretty much boils down to like, you you walk around, and interact with things in the in the environment, uh, which is like a significant chunk of the game, and then another significant chunk of the game is like stealth mechanics, and there are some action sequences as well. But the majority of the game is. Uh, wandering around the environment and inter interacting with things, interacting with people to further the story or to find objects to interact with to, to further, to get to an, a new area. Um, and I would have liked more puzzle stuff, uh, which I, there wasn't really that much puzzle stuff. There was like the the cooperative, like getting up a wall thing, but I would have liked more stuff like that. Those feel like more like cooperative, like quick time events. Than yeah. The I mean, there puzzles. were some yeah. puzzles that was like, um, spoilers again, uh, it's like, how do you get this wrench away? It's not a puzzle. It, it's it, just, it, uh, is, it is. It is. It's like a, it's almost a puzzle. It's almost. Yeah. They're they're very. A lot of the situations that you're thrown into are puzzle light. Yeah. It's like fi figure out how to do this. Oh, this event. Great. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, I will say that, m like partway through the game, you, I sort of realized that um, you don't. The game will say like, all right, we got to talk to all these people, figure out where the thing we're looking for is, and it's almost. It is always at the furthest point from where you start. So I was like, we're not talking to any of these people, just go to the end. And and we would do that and it 100% worked all the time. Really? Yeah, like, there's like, we need to find where this guy is at this construction site. Let's talk to all these people. And there's like, it's probably like 200 feet uh, of just people left and right. Mm -hmm. And we just walked to the end, walked up an elevator and there he was. Like, didn't talk to anyone. So the game design can huh. be a little predictable in that okay. sense. And, I can and, see that. And sometimes, like sometimes the stories that you get out of talking to those people can be interesting, quick but interesting. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just like a waste of time. And he's like, "Why'd you bother me?" And you're like, "Dude, I'm sorry, man. I, I didn't need to." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, all right." I literally just walked up and tapped X, and you got really upset. Right. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, whatever. Sorry. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's a fun cooperative experience. I don't think it's like the groundbreaking, world-changing co-op experience that some people seem to think it is. That's not to say that it is. It wouldn't be for you. Uh, it's a very fun game just to sit down with your friend and play through in six hours. Interestingly enough, I, I did find that I was more... Most cooperative games, there's a lot of banter and a lot of, like, let's fuck around and do some shit. In this game, although there are many games, for the most part, we were both focused on the story. So there was, like, a lot less banter than there normally is in, like, a, a cooperative game for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that... Your mileage may vary, obviously, for that, but... I felt like, and that's that's a good that's a that's a good thing for like, like that says something about the story being compelling because we both just shut up and listened. That's um, the total opposite of me and Ashley yesterday. We were snarky bitches. We were making so many awful prison jokes. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> no, like oh yeah. There's one point I literally like we were doing pull-ups and we look over and there's those two guys like behind each other. And I was like, what is going on over there? He's like, this is this is a, Kyrie, 
I, I need a chiropractor, and this guy's oh, fixing yeah, my back. And he's like, yeah, uh, all over the guy, like trying to like flip him or crack his back or something. But it looks think, like something else entirely is going on. Yeah, we were just making fun of the fact that the prison was so light security. And it was just, it was crazy. It was just like, oh, I think something's going on over there. Whatever, they're just a couple of murderers. They're yeah. probably yeah. fine. It's yeah. chill. Yeah, for me, I mean, like, so I, I'm only at, um, like, you know, going through the prison. And for me, the story has been kind of meh. But for me, it's more been about just, like, playing with my friend yeah. mm -hmm. and us cracking jokes. And, like, right. like the chiropractic yeah. thing was just, like, we were, then we were just cracking, like, those jokes for the entire time and having I, fun with it. But I, I hear the story gets a lot better. I like, see, I like the beginning because I, I, I like, A, there's so many novices to Shawshank, but B, I like prison break stuff. I think it's fun. Okay. Um, so for me, it was like, this is this is compelling. And like, like mid, midway through the game, I started to get, it was a little bit dry on okay. uh, the story. But, and that's when we did start fucking around and talking more. Um, but yeah. I'm super excited to play it because um, I don't like really game with my girlfriend much. Like she doesn't play like Overwatch or Monster Hunter or something, but I told her I was like, there's this couch co-op game. It's gonna take us like five, six hours to complete. Like when you come over, we're just sit down and play it. So I'm super excited to like share a video game experience with her, yeah. especially since it's not playing through the first hour, out two hours with Ashley. I know that it's not like complicated combat that's gonna, you know, no, it's, like it's introducing straight. someone to a first person shooter. Like here's your controller, let's play Overwatch. It's nothing like that. It's like we can yeah, just there, easily play this together. There is shooting in the game and it's Real difficult on a controller. Oh, yeah, really? Okay. Um, yeah. So, okay. Keep that in mind. I, I guess, yeah. So there are also like branching paths in the game. D did you? Wait, what? Kind of. I mean, like they they reconvene. Okay. But um, you're talking about like the players separate. Well, yeah. yeah. Are you, like there are choices. So, okay. Another spoiler. But once you get out of the prison, there's a point where you can either go under the bridge or you can get in the car and drive across the bridge. It's it's. Do you know like what the differences are there? Uh, I, th I think most of those are like illusion of choice. Like I think that the 30 seconds of situation might be a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but you're never. I don't think it's gonna really influence how the game plays out. Okay. Uh, like and it's pretty apparent later on. There are times when you like you don't want to bring attention to yourself, so you can do this or this. Um, but regardless of what you do, you've brought attention to yourself, and there's like a, okay. an action sequence, mm. and like there, there's never a world. Like at least I imagine there would never be a world where like you didn't go through this 30 minute action sequence getting away from the cops. Sure. Like it just seems like it it, it, it it gives you a choice of how to handle the situation but doesn't really affect how it plays out. Yeah, cause I was curious as to how like if the like, so you have the option of either getting in a police car and just driving across a bridge or going under the bridge. And I was wondering if like going under the bridge would be more stealthy and like result in a What, what did you do? I got in the car. And, okay, and what'd my, you do? What well, I was, I, w I wasn't in control cause I was just in the back seat. And my like friend playing was just like I'm gunning it and just like hit the the gas and like drove through a bunch of like cop cars. And you got away. And yeah, like well, you end up like going off of the like, you get through the bridge and then go off the bridge into the forest and like flip your car and, and then, then a bunch of dogs gets in after you. Okay. Yeah. So what did you do? That's the, almost the, almost the same thing happens. You go into the bridge uh, and you stealth and there's like like there's people looking for you and you get through it um, and then you basically get to the part where the dogs chase you. Okay. Oh, so it's literally just a small divergence. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah. I, I will say the thing I like the most about this game is the fact that A, it costs $30. Yeah. Um, and B, it gives you the option for one player to buy the game and the other person doesn't have to. That's, that's really, really cool. So, that's really cool. Like, my friend is pretty picky about buying games. Um, like he'll only buy a game if I'm like, you have to buy this fucking game. So uh, he's bought The Witcher, I'm assuming. Well, he also has his own taste, so yes. He, <laughs> but... Um, when I when I suggested this, he's like, eh, I don't know. And then I found out it was like only one person has to buy. I was like, Hey, I'm gonna buy this if you'll play it with me. He's like, Absolutely. Uh, and he was just able to download the Friends Pass and play with me. And it's, That's the, it's such a good system. That like thirty dollars a game for two people, fantastic. And if you I can't, really can't deny that. want to Venmo someone fifteen bucks, right. then you can and you split it. Right. <laughs> That's the exact same reason I'm playing with my friend. It's because he was like, Yeah, I don't know if I want to drop the money for it. And I was like, I'll buy it. And he goes, All right, cool. Yeah, I'm in. So, yeah, right. <laughs> so I was like, Oh yeah, this is an easy sell for it to yeah, play the friend. That's that's a great. Games should take note of that. That's yeah. fucking cool. It was really, yeah, that was really awesome. I was really happy when I saw that come out. It's yeah. just, I think it's like it's the first game to do that, right? Like, is there, uh, like, I mean, what's another DS game? DS like... games did that a lot with multiplayer. Okay, right. I guess that's true. With Consoles. Download, with download play. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's very. The other thing is, this game doesn't profit EA at all. Oh, really? All the profits go to the developer. Oh, oh that's really nice. cool. I Which didn't is, know that. yeah, it's hmm. weird, but cool. I, I think. I brought it up before on many a get glitch please, many a podcast that like one of my most important things to me in gaming is being able to share it with people that I care about, mm -hmm. um, which is why like I had Destiny clans and play Destiny every day is because it wasn't about the game, it was about 
the people friendship. I was playing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was about friendship. It's just so, friends for the whole the, journey. The whole the journey. Friends we made along the exactly. way. Exactly. So it's like I feel like a game like this warms my heart to see that like I can play by the game, play with people that I care about, and we can have a co-op adventure where we're maybe bantering if the story is not too compelling, but we're having fun. We're seeing silly things that we could talk about, and it's just like six hours of just bonding with somebody and just having a good time and that I don't know I feel like that's what gaming is for me is like sharing it and spending time with people that I care about yeah so it makes me happy sweet yeah 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 I'd rec I definitely recommend the game for someone that just like you have a close friend or just like a friend that you enjoy gaming with like pick it up you have fun you, if you want a narrative co-op experience and you don't mind dropping 30 bucks for two people to play a game I think it's a, a pretty good choice it's a fun like one day weekend game and yeah sweet. yay yeah, well, I mean, we have a lot of other video game news uh, to talk about. A lot of games have dropped information on when they're coming out and what's happening, so let's move on to news. Is that a I have new no game? Idea what, yeah, Weird. is that The Witcher? Yeah, yeah. I think it might be definitely. The Witcher. Definitely definitely Witcher. Witcher Royale. I have a question about The Witcher. Yes. Have you seen Geralt's dick yet? Uh, no, oh. I've seen Yennefer's boobs. Oh, yay, that's fun. And also Kira Metz's boobs. So they show some boobs in the game. When no does dingle he dangle. dick out? Does he uh, not dick out? I thought he dicked I, out. I don't know that you see. Aren't his there like dick. baths where uh, he? You definitely see his butt. Okay. If you're into man butt, you can I, get I'm it. I'm into man butt. Um, yeah. So that's that's the news for this week. Uh, <laughs> stopping by. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very all right, much. Yeah, sweet. All right. All right, that was great. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> uh, there's there's been a lot of uh, information drop about some various video games and some hardware. Uh, first one, uh, PS5 details dropped. Nah, this is not. Da, 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 this yeah, is not it, details. Not, it's, not details. It's, it's this is someone. There's an expensive tech site that charges a thousand dollars for a subscription, and someone summarized. What? It. Yeah. Someone summarized their release, and it was like, "Hey, the new PS5 going to use a processor. What do you think?" Pretty cool, right? Yeah, sorry, here, let me redo uh, that. PS5, details. Um, there's no release date. Uh, possibly some dev kits might have been sent out, but, but then, then some people would be like, every, no. They're, they're, that's the thing about it is people were like, dev kits came out, and then the other half of the people were like, fuck you, no, they didn't. It's yeah. like, well, their, their speculation was that they, they, they supposedly uh, have contacts in the hardware manufacturing that said, like, yeah, we made a lot of these dev kits, and they're, they've shipped out, and so the the writer of this would speculated that like because there's so many dev kits out there we're probably going to see a 2018 release mm -hmm. uh, you could take that for what it is i mean i don't I, I don't mean, i don't agree with it but that's just that's what has been said let's just call them what they are rumors yeah, yeah. they're uh, total total rumors take them yeah. with a whole salt shaker um, salt the information i have here is um, it, the sony will use the console to push its vr efforts further it sounds like they're going to embed um, vr tech baked in at the silicon level so it'll probably push VR a little bit more. It looks like VR is going anywhere anytime soon, if these are true. Um, and it's going to support a GPU based on AMD's uh, Navi architecture with a CPU that's potentially a custom item from AMD's Zen line. So basically... Yeah. I feel like yeah. <laughs> that stuff is so, like... <laughs> who, who cares? Like, yeah, they're, they're going to use a custom CPU. Fucking surprise, like... Well, here's what we know. <laughs> the games will have graphics. <laughs> right? like, Shit, uh, really? I know, this is an advanced uh, VR thing. So, I don't know. Th that This, to me, is, is not news until we hear something more concrete. Yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. I feel the same. Not a lot. Uh, what everyone's really excited for... Is, is this it? The game yeah. everyone's really, really yeah. looking forward to. Yeah. No Man's Sky is coming to the God Xbox. God damn it! No Man's Sky is coming to the Xbox. With a new update. With a new update. Yeah, they're going to add multiplayer uh, cooperative throughout the entire universe. No, they're not. No, that's no, no that's, 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 that's absolute lies. But they are dropping it with all of the DLC that came out for the PlayStation. That was the DLC the... come out for that game? Yeah. They, Found... sold, they sold money? Yeah. <laughs> It, it was they, like they, the Pathfinder. Yeah, I think these are, are these updates. 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 Yeah. So okay. it wasn't DLC. There was so. a yeah, Foundation, Pathfinder, and Atlas Rising were the three. Um, yeah. You know, people people seem to like this game now that it has some updates. I've seen some positive uh, notions about it. Notions. And I and I I'm happy that this game has somewhat of an audience because man was it a fucking dumpster fire when it came out. Oh, the it biggest. It made me sad. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like if you go to that subreddit, there are people that are like, I found a nice planet. Do you want to look? Look at it. Here it is. And I think that's very nice. <laughs> well, people are talking about, like, they're saying, does this forgive the dumpster fire of its release just because it's coming to Xbox with all these things? And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm, it's, 
it was so bad when it first came out. And they, no. they promised so many things. They were like, you'll be able to see your friends. And they're like, did we say you could see your friends? We meant you can't. We lied. So, okay, so I have a list from, this is from an old article of in 2016 of things that were either shown or like promised and then never delivered on. Oh, uh, shit. This is just from what I've seen or the list I found. Um, but the highlights are... No, never delivered on or not delivered on at launch? At launch. Okay. Um, so here are the highlights. Uh, planetary physics, uh, ship classes with meaningful differentiation, uh, faction reputation with meaningful gameplay impact, um, resource availability, asteroid landings, space station and fleet destruction, large fleets, traveling freighters, uh, large-scale battles the player can join, in-atmosphere battles, NPCs outside trading posts and other docks, uh, ring planets, sand planets, flying between stars, um, complex creature behavior, including environment interaction, uh, points of interest such as large structures and crashed freighters, uh, hacking locked doors, radio chatter, and interaction with other players. I don't think any of that exists. Well, uh, one of those I saw is has been added to the game. Oh. Uh, so the three updates, um, Foundation added creative and survival mode, um, uh, among a few other smaller things. Um, Pathfinder added multiple ground vehicles, um, 4K rendering and like nicer graphics basically for the PS4 Pro. Uh, and Atlas Rising added basic multiplayer uh, on a very, very, very basic scale. But no NPCs, no complex there, there anything. There are NPCs, they're just garbage. Oh. Yeah. Garbage NPCs. I, I don't know. I mean, I think at this point, people have pretty much made their mind up about No Man's Sky. And either you're willing to give it another shot or you're not. And I think some people still like it, or some people like it now. Uh, and some people, like myself, probably never going to go back to it. Yep. I bought it once for the PS4, played it for a few hours, went... No. And then put it down, and I do not know where that game case is yeah. to this day. I held off on buying it, and uh, all I know is all of the, I guess, uh, information that's come out with the game since it launched, and like everybody's complaints, and then uh, it's been really cool to see the developers really support it and jump in and like start adding these things. Um, I'm going to see what this big update, because they're adding, they're going to drop the game for Xbox in summer along with some big update. I don't think they've uh, talked any more about what that update's going to include, uh, depending on what they add. Maybe I'll pick it up on Xbox when I see it on sale. Uh, but other than when that, I see it on sale, <laughs> I, I love that sale. little caveat there. Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, that's kind of all the news we know for that. But we'll finally we get to the game that I know that you're very excited about. If this is another Spyro. Yay! Remaster. <laughs> Spyro Remaster is amount or was finally announced. It was kind of leaked by Amazon on accident. That was the funniest leak ever. Uh, if, if people don't know about that leak, it was someone trolling asking. Amazon when it was going to be listed and Amazon actually responded and <laughs> listed it before it even got leaked or confirmed So GG. Oh, no, where was it Walmart? It was Amazon. It was, it was Am Amazon. It was Amazon. Yeah. Okay, either way Good on you Amazon. Good on you. Thanks. <laughs> I mean that looks good. Looks it looks pretty. so I'm nice. I'm excited. Look I, at and, that. Yeah, it's I mean I feel like if you're a PlayStation person growing up Like for me, it was all about Crash Bandicoot and I did play Spyro but only on the demo disc um, so I'm excited to actually get to play the full game, but like for me, I'm I'm, I'm not like as freaking out as some people are, like Mika it's and Jeremy. And Jer me and Jeremy oh, have been freaking the fuck out on Twitter. No, I'm Jeremy has been now. like like here's this screenshot. This yep. is this level from Spyro, yep. and this is what it's gonna be, and I'm really excited for it. I'm uh, so mad that I woke up to see that because I was gonna do the exact same thing, and I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> He uh, got there first. Yeah, it's the original three games coming to PS4 and Xbox One on September 21st, 2018. Yeah. Uh, Spyro fans are excited. Yeah. 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 It's uh, just, yeah. I don't know, I'm really hoping that they have like the remastered music as well because like that's one of those things that I went home to LA a, a while back and I loaded up my PlayStation because I it was it's still at home and I played one of the Spyro games and like I heard that music and I heard just the ambiance of the uh, the gems sparkling and I was like oh oh I remember sitting in my dad's office like looking up at the big backed TV playing Spyro and it was just like that huge nostalgia bomb which I know like a lot of people were like oh you're just buying nostalgia and I'm like hell yeah I'm just buying nostalgia sure. that's a it's such a good, happy feeling. If it's what you enjoy and you're having fun with it, yeah. Like, and I'm, you know, if it's the demand is there for the developers, they're probably gonna make it. So. And it's funny when cool. Crash Bandicoot and when Ukulele first started happening, and you know, people were saying it's just like a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie. The first thing I said, I was like, I want a Spyro remaster. And then when Crash Bandicoot happened, I was like, I want a Spyro remaster. So the fact that the Spyro remaster is real and it looks, it's not just like they slapped Vaseline on the lens and like. They actually took time, and Sparks has, like, a face now, and I don't know. 
I haven't really seen, excited. like, I'm sure there are complaints about this game, or that they're making this game. Right. But all I've seen from fans is, like, how excited people are. There was, like, a Twitter account that I think had one tweet, and it was just, like, Crash is enjoying himself. And it's, like, Crash, but you see that purple glow, and mm-hmm. in his eyes you can see, like, kind of a Spyro gameplay, and everyone knew it was coming. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, no, like, it, it's really cool. I think I played through half of the first game, so I never really got into Spyro. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really a PlayStation kid until, like, later in the PlayStation life cycle. But... I'll go back. I'll play this. Yeah, it's, probably, yeah. it's definitely like from what I remember and from what I played when I was home. It's 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 a uh, you know, young kids played the game. It's not like Dark Souls. It's not complicated. It's not hard. It's puzzle solving and a collect. It seems like a fun platformer. But yeah, it's a fun platformer, and there's like fun personalities and like there's lots of jokes and you know it's has plot. I like it. I enjoy it. I'm very excited. The fact that it's a the trilogy remaster, too. I, I would be um, super down and excited for that game if Spider-Man wasn't coming the right after. Month, three yep. weeks before, which yep. is the next thing we're talking about, <laughs> is uh, the new Spider-Man game finally uh, dropped its release date, uh, which is September 7th. Yep. Um, it has two editions from what I've seen with the, some other varieties. It has the digital deluxe edition. Uh, well, it has the basic edition where you just buy the game. Mm-hmm. It has the digital deluxe edition, which comes with the base game, mm-hmm. and uh, new story chapters coming as a post-launch DLC in the form of Marvel Spider-Man's The City That Never Sleeps. Um, it's a DLC that will have three chapters, missions, uh, villains, you know, more gameplay with more details on the DLC being announced later. Uh, and then the digital deluxe edition, or sorry, that is the digital uh, deluxe edition, which is 80 bucks. Um, and then the collector's edition, which you're seeing back here, is 150 bucks, and it comes with a whole slew of things, uh, including, um, you know, all the DLC I mentioned beforehand, a steel bookcase, a mini art book, and a pretty dope-looking Spider-Man statue. Yeah. I mean, they're not telling us what is it. <laughs> not telling us what the statue is. I feel like that's a weird, weird move. Wait, the statue is it? Is it? No, uh, no the, they've the, partially the, revealed it. What, what, what's under? Oh. He's standing on something, and they're like, it's too spoilery for right now, but we'll oh. still tell you before the game launches. So maybe they're maybe they're waiting to show us another trailer, and that, that would will, make sense. But at least will, you know what Spidey looks like. Yeah, yeah, it looks mm-hmm. like Spider-Man, which is interesting. They're also like slowly yeah. dropping some like they're like gonna release like the different DLC costumes, at different dates. Like they showed, I think it was like Punk Spider-Man. He has like spikes yeah. <laughs> on his head and like a cool like, jean jacket or something. I'm they done. also announced something that shouldn't have to be announced, but it is anyway. There will not be microtransactions for this game, mm-hmm. and the devs are. Uh, announcing that there will be plenty of bonus content to unlock within the game. Yep. Also, photo mode. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, I'm, I'm, the yeah. fact that you could take selfies of Spider-Man, just like, uh, it's gonna the, be gorgeous. I'm a little, the one thing I'm a little bummed about this announcement was that they said it would be locked at 30 frames a second. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, on both the PS4 Pro and the PS4. And that yeah, makes, it sucks. That makes me a little bummed out. I really, I really like Games that have higher frame rates than that. Yeah, but I mean, it's just your spirits. You can play as Mary Jane. That's cool. So that's cool. I wonder if it was like Does a she shoot webs. I do not know. Well, there is like Spider MJ Spider- is a. Listen, I don't know about Spider Man lore. At right. All. I, wonder, I don't know what storyline they're doing because Spider MJ is a thing, just like Spider Gwen is a thing. I, so like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what storyline they're doing. Yeah. I've just gotten into the Spider Man comics. I just started reading them, so gotcha. I don't know too much about. And I've been reading the Miles Morales Spider Man, not the. The Peter Parker. Miles has been teased. <laughs> really? In well, in one of the first trailers, hmm. and it was said. Oh, I thought this was Miles Morales Spider Man. I no, it's not. Okay. Um, I think it's Peter Parker. It's oh. yeah, and it was it was teased that uh, Miles could possibly be playable or Spider Man at the same time because a developer said in this story there will be two Spider Mans at once. Really? Yes. Huh. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this was this was like very early, like when during E3 times when Spider Man was first getting talked about. And Miles is in one of the first trailers. Okay, I gotcha. Um, that's pretty cool. So that's why everybody was like, Miles playable? And the devs were like, I don't know, maybe two Spider-Man. I'm excited. I, I played Spider-Man 2, which was a really good web swinging one. Mm-hmm. And I played that a little bit, but the one I played the most was Spider-Man the movie, the game. Oh. And <laughs> that was good. Yeah? I mean, and for my, I think I was like 10 or something. It was <laughs> awesome. I just hope that it's like you can web sling anywhere, you know, like it's open I th- world. I think, I think they've said it's going to be very, very open world. That's awesome. Um, That's all I, I want from a I actually game. wonder if like the 60 FPS is like the reason they're not doing that is maybe because of the web slinging. I don't I'm, know I'm sure it is. I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of shit to take. I'm sure it's a lot of processing power to swing that yeah. fast through all that stuff. Yeah. But 
I still want to see it at 60 frames a second. I wish it's a, it's a Sony exclusive, though. It's not coming to anything else, right? Yeah. It's, so, it's, I won't be able to get it on 60 frames, not ever. Made by Insomniac. So, like, I'm really looking forward to that. They're a solid. They're developer. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Fucking yeah. Ratchet and Clank. So good. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait it's to buy good. this game and play it. Yeah. Yep, and then same. just rush through it in two weeks, and then I can jump into Spiral. Yeah, Spiral. There's another, there's another game announcement that I, I was going to talk about, and I cannot remember it. Uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 is coming to consoles? No. No. Other than that, I don't know. Uh, Shaq Fu sequel. Oh, yes, that was dumb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. That's it. Well, a lot of games. A lot of games. Go. A lot I'm of excited. Games. It's a good time to be a gamer. Yes. But that's all the news I have for this week. All right. All right. Everyone go home, play The Witcher. That's your homework for <laughs> the next month. See you next week. Play The Witcher. Thanks, everybody.